Oh boy, oh boy, MVMD down in the dirt again today. We are once again down. It is not a good, but I am still bullish, and I think that this will soon be the bottom And now. Um, I am still holding all my shares. Of course, I want to look at a few things there today. I want to look at the uh, listing statement from the reverse takeover and show you guys the lockup period on uh, the shares, and I want to go through their financial statements as well and uh, just give you an idea of how long they can last what's going on there and the financial statements do look pretty good now moving on from that the what is really keeping me afloat right now is amc because we are once again at 25 percent up today hitting that 40 dollar mark it is nice to see and i want to show you guys some comparisons right now on amc and gme and where we might be headed there finally i want to look at oeg because we ran yesterday hard in oeg up over a hundred percent because of a uh, contract uh, a new contract that they got um in mississippi to lay 700 miles of fiber optic cable and i want to show you guys uh, some quick maths you can do to kind of figure out what price point you could be at because you don't necessarily need to make a big excel sheet and then do all this to kind of find a good price point for the stock and actually that's where we're going to start right now so for oeg let's first take a look at uh the share price we w are today down back at the 596 level which does make sense and i'll show you guys why in just a second but this is kind of the run we had from yesterday here off of that contract starting at that three dollar a level so um, here's kind of the quick mass that you can do if we go over to this uh, what I did here is basically looked up how much does it cost for one mile of fiber optic cable, right? And and we got here that the Department of Transportation has compiled statistics where the average cost is $27,000 per mile. So you can take $27,000 per mile, multiply that by 700 miles, you get about $18.9 million. Let's say OEG gets about a little under half of that, uh, puts them at a $9 million in revenue there now that nine million dollars in revenue if we go back over to a weeble here and we take a look at financials and we go oeg we can see in q1 they had about uh 9.49 million dollars in revenue uh so that means they would double their revenue essentially with this contract which would put them at about 18 million assuming they still have around 9.49 million dollars in other revenue uh that is spread out over a few quarters of course but let's just say it all comes through in quarter two then it makes sense that the price had doubled because their revenue doubled and also the fact that it kind of uh, gives more um backing to oeg that they're legitimate they're doing the right things here uh so you know that gives them a little bit of extra uh multiplier on their share price so you know basically it's quite easy to do calculations like this you don't need a big spreadsheet or anything you can literally just see this is their revenues in q1 they add about nine million dollars in revenue double it right and, and their share price should double so at that 65 percent mark that we were at yesterday hovering there for a while it would have made sense to buy uh because we can see from their financials just that easy calculation um giving us a price of about six dollars so it makes sense that we're down today after we hit kind of that eight dollar mark came down from that a little bit all makes sense there and yes we are down today so that's the first thing i want to show you now let's uh, since we're already here we may as well quickly look at amc and uh and, and GME here, right? So AMC, here it is. We're at $39 right now, coming up from obviously that 17 mark and before that the nine mark and before that the $2 mark, which is actually where I originally bought, but I did buy more at the 16, $17 a mark when we came up that first initial spike. Now we're hanging here, what's next for AMC? Well, if we go to GME here for a second and we take a look at what's happened here, this is kind of the first spike we saw after we got to that $40 mark, right? So um, 
we can see before that we were hovering at around eight nine dollars even down to two dollars then we had that initial spike to twenty dollars this is kind of where we are at in amc right now uh and then we had a little spike to forty dollars here and then after that we had this a uh, big run up right and now this could be what we might see in amc here coming up soon um you know we're, we're kind of at this level um in amc right now and and so it's not unrealistic to think that we might see a big run when we see some shorts cover and, and all this and we're getting those 25 percent day over a day right so you know we could be headed here and and who knows it might completely repeat itself uh it, it's really really hard to say with these stocks you know uh, with these meme stocks we could see amc come back down heavily i'm definitely not selling any of my shares right now if anything i was actually thinking of picking up some more today i did set a limit for uh 38.5 so got close there to hitting my limit but it did not hit still bullish on amc uh and 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 we'll see where we go now i'm moving on to mvmd guys i cannot believe we are down so much again today i'm just looking at the price it just keeps dropping we're down another 8.75 percent today but i wanted to show you guys a few things here uh the first one is this right here this is the listing statement from february 20th 2020 and it basically gives you all the information you need on the reverse takeover on meadow bay inc on mountain valley and and kind of how this all happened so if we go down here to page 50 here we see additional trading restrictions right and this is basically the lockup period on the shares um, on the resulting issuer shares that were given out. looking at a here we have an aggregate of 52 million resulting issuer shares and the common shares of the resulting issuer underlying 51 million two hundred twelve thousand five hundred fifty six mvmd warrants issued to the mvmd shareholders pursuant to the mvmd private placement as well as previously to the subscribers of the private placement offering of units by mvmd between february 21st 2019 and june 5th 2019 are subject to trading restrictions however all these trading restrictions are already gone because the last one was 180 days following the completion of the transaction now what's important to see here though is the expiry of these warrants which has led to an increase in supply of the share price right because if we take a look february 21st 2019 and june 5th 2019 uh this is when the warrants were uh given out right so if we go now to page 15 in here which is back all the way back here so um what we have here on january 15th 2019 uh which is the same date as the other one right because these are the warrants that we're looking at now uh mvmd began to offer units um of mvmd uh on a private placement basis at a subscription price of 0.2 per first unit each first unit was comprised of one class of b non-voting common share and one share pursuant or sorry and one share purchase warrant to acquire one mvmd class b share at an exercise price of 0.35 so the warrants are exercisable for a share for at a price of 0.35 per share for a period ending 24 months after the issuance date of these warrants now the issuance dates here are as follows on february 21st 2019 mbmd issued 38 million mbmd class b shares at 0 0.2 per share for gross proceeds of seven million dollars and 38 million class b common share purchase warrants the warrants are exercisable at 0.35 per MVMD class B share and expire two years from the grant date subject to acceleration provisions. Now that is important because what do we see there? February 21st, 2019 expire two years from the grant date. So in two years, which is 
2020, February 2021, right? That's two years, these expire. Now that was this February. So there we can already see that increase the supply of shares by 38 million, assuming that everybody exercised their warrants at a price of 0.35 per share. And why would you not exercise your warrants at 0.35 per share when you've got a price of a dollar, right? That's a great, great ROI. So these most, if not all of these were exercised here on February 21st, 2019, because of that was the expiry date, increasing the supply of shares by 38,388,000. Now, on March 8th, 2019, we see another 4.1 million warrants again exercisable two years after so these expired march 8th 2021 and on march 18th we see another three million and you guys get the idea right these are all shares that are now um have been issued from those warrants and that increases the supply of shares and that means as we know that pushes down the price of the stock so this all of this has a big reason to do with why we're seeing the share price coming down so much because people are exercising their warrants, increasing the supply of shares and pushing down the price. Now, if we come down a little bit, because there are more of these, but what's important to see is here, 51,212,556 resulting issuer shares being reserved for issuance pursuant to the exercise of MVMD warrants. These are the warrants that we were looking at before and including 1 million warrants pursuant, issued pursuant to the MVMD private placement. So we've got these 51 million warrants exercising two years at around that February 21st to June 5th level. And that's why we're seeing the price come down this much because we're seeing these shares being exercised. We're sorry, we're seeing these warrants being exercised. Again, increases the supply of shares at a lower price and that pushes down the price of our uh, current shares or, or at the market level. It pushes down the market price of the shares, right? So this right here is a big reason why we're seeing that decrease there because of the increase in supply. Now let's go back to page 50 right here. This is basically this first part dealt with, right? We've got these 51 million warrants which have been um, exercised and, and basically shares were issued to the holders of those warrants. And again, there's no trading restrictions on these because the last ones were 180 days following the completion of the transaction uh, and, and that date has passed. Now, moving on to part B. Now this is 54 million MVMD shares issued pursuant to the share exchange transaction between MVMD and MVM on January 10th, 2019. They will also be subject to trading restrictions such that 10% of such MVMD shares will be free trading upon the listing date. Listing date is the date um, that MVMD uh, listed on the CSE, right? Which was uh, March uh, 2020. Now, and the remaining 90% shall become freely tradable as follows. 15% six months following the listing date. So that date has passed. That was about, um, the 15% was about September um, where they were allowed to trade these shares. Uh, again, 25% 12 months following the listing date. Now this would be again, March, 2021. Again, this lines up with the expiry of those warrants and also lines up with the short report. So these 25% here were now tradable on the open market at the same time we had the warrant expiry and at the same time the short report came out. Again, this led to downward pressure as people were selling their shares for a nice profit because the price was still high. This is where all this downward selling pressure is coming from, guys. Because again, 25% of these shares are now tradable. 
uh, and all these warrants were likely exercised, which increased the supply of shares without increasing the demand too much. And again, the supply uh, of shares that were increased were at the exercise price of 0.35 is where those shares were issued, right? And again, those could also have instantly been sold on the market because the restrictions have been passed. So this is kind of the reason why we have so much downward pressure. And this is kind of the reason why we're seeing um, MVMD drop. Now again, 0.35, we're getting close to that level now in the share price. And, and, and so I don't see us going much lower than that. But again, we're pretty much there right now. So do I think we're close to the bottom? Yes, I do. Uh, judging from kind of this information here, very, very important to understand um, why we're seeing the price come down so much and realizing that it's not just, uh, you know, retail investors selling their shares. It, it, it's, it's exercised warrants, which were given in private placements um, and, and selling of shares, which were also given, you know, at, at these really low levels. For example, these 25% um, of shares, which are now uh, tradable, right? And, and we do have another 25% coming up 18 months following the date, right? That's only a few months away. And again, another 25, 24 months. Uh, but, but again, I don't see us really going below that 0.35 level. Also, I think we're going to get some good news till then. So again, I think we should be pushing the price up from there. We'll see though. Uh, but again, the last thing I want to show you guys here is, is Dennis Hancock, right? Uh, now he has 2.4 million shares here, which is about 1% of the uh, shares outstanding in MVMD. Now, if we go over to the SETI Insider filings, you can find these on CEO.ca and uh, many other websites. Uh, you'll see uh, that, that Dennis still has over 2 million common shares here and over 4 million options, right? Uh, so basically he sold very little of his uh, actual shares there and he is now allowed to do that, which means again, a bullish, right? He's bullish. He hasn't sold many of his shares at all. And I think he's planning on holding these because he knows the price is coming up more. Kevin Pelosky here as well has still about 200,000 shares. Nancy Richardson as well has 200,000 shares uh, actually increased their share uh, count here, right? Since this date. So that's all really bullish as well, because they believe in the company on some of the partnerships they have on some of the other kind of things they're doing here. And, and again, it should be good news for MVMD, but I don't know. We just keep tanking. It's, it's hard to say MVMD is just not doing well for me. It's one of the, one of the stocks I'm the most bullish on. And yet it's probably done the worst for me in my entire portfolio lately. So not great. Um, and if you guys bought at the dollar level like me or even higher, then that's just what it is. But I still think that MVMD will be higher than a dollar moving forward here. Um, I, I would, I would give it maximum a year here. Uh, and I could be wrong. You know, I was wrong in the past. I thought the kind of the 0.9 level would be the bottom. It clearly was not at all. Um, but in the meantime, we got AMC, we got OEG to keep us alive here. Uh, hopefully you guys are also invested in some stocks that are keeping your portfolio afloat and alive. And other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you guys on Friday.